For more on the conditions there, let me turn to Dr. Margaret Harris. She's with the World Health Organization. Dr. Harris, you and I actually had a very frank discussion a week ago about this time, about the conditions in Gaza. Uh, it seems things are, have just gotten uh, drastically worse, to say the least. Asia, you know, I really, from last week, I couldn't believe it could be any worse than it was last week. Uh, your reporter has really captured the frustration, and, and I can only imagine what it's like to be a truck driver. We are so frustrated, because here we are sitting in Geneva, knowing that every minute that ticks by, more and more people are getting injured, the needs are getting greater, and the supplies... And have, I, I'm wrong to say dwindled. They're just not there. And yet we have these trucks on the border. We've got plane loads we're flying in. We're loading them up in our hub in Dubai. But the will just to let us go over the border and so, help... So, Dr. Us. Harris, are you hearing anything about what the issue is? Is it about restrictions the Israelis are putting? Because they're saying food and water and basic supplies are fine, but fuel cannot get in, they have concerns about the fuel. Is that what the issue is? I'm not privy to those discussions. Okay. Though okay. I know that the, the, the top people, you can see the Secretary yeah. General's there and the humanitarian coordinator, Martin Griffiths, is there. Uh, so the top people are there making it very clear what needs to go in. But we are also making it very clear fuel must go in. Yeah, the tell us why fuel is so important, Dr. Harris to generate electricity because there is no electricity supply there is no you know the rest of us have an electricity supply that comes from electricity companies what's going on in there the only electricity supply you will have is if you have a generator and if you have a generator you need diesel to make it run it's as simple as that and the hospitals have been extraordinary. They've managed to keep it going for at least at this period of time by rationing, by using it as best they can. And now we hear that, they, that they've called for anybody who's got fuel to bring it to the hospitals. But if you don't have electricity, your ventilators have to stop. You don't have light. Yeah, so and, I, and, and I got to ask you, 20 trucks waiting on the Gaza uh, on the Gaza-Egypt border, is that even enough to help more than one million people in Gaza who basically have nothing at this point? What it represents is hope. The hope that finally what, you know, the, 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 the huge amount of aid that's needed will start to flow. It's nowhere near enough. I think it's been described by my colleagues as a drop in the ocean. Uh, but what we... It, it represents is the beginning and we wanted to represent the beginning of a proper delivery of help to people who are now the most desperate and most helpless in the world and dr harris so many people um, are taking shelter in hospitals um, in schools in churches but it seems like none of these places are safe anymore so where are people supposed to go when the israelis tell the palestinians in gaza you need to evacuate immediately where are they supposed to go so that's why we say first of all healthcare is never a target the evacuation orders must be reversed but essentially the hostilities have to stop because exactly where can people go how can we stand by and just have two and a half million people in a small area at, with no place of safety we're going to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Margaret Harris with the WHO World Health Organization. We appreciate your time.